Gadget UK here again. This time I'm looking at the VIC-20 ROM slash RAM board uh, from Dave Curran at uh, Tamath Software. Um, I'll post some links down below to his uh, blog and his website. Um, yeah, he's kindly sent me this for review here. Um, I think this is something new that's just been prototyping. He's also working on um, a more uh, proficient version of this, one that's got additional functionality. I think he's, his plans uh, are to uh, add um, SD to IEC support and he's going to do that I think using the parallel port so that will be interesting when he gets around to finishing you know finishing his design there um, but this is you know what he's come up with to start with here the first sort of attempt at a standard RAM and ROM board um, and it's quite cool I have to admit the the quality of the board here um, is really nice. It's a, you have to excuse some of the marks and things on here. It's um, been I've been pulling it in and out. And it's got all my mucky, greasy fingerprints and things all over it. Um, but the quality of the PCB is uh, excellent, really, and the uh, solder work on there is very nice. Um, it's put these labels on here so you can see. Uh, if I just get a little bit closer. Sorry, it is a bit glossy. Um, you can see the sort of the, the functionality you can influence there with those switches. So switch one on these dip switches here. You can toggle, you know, the RAM on or off. Um, Switch two, um, it toggles block at uh, block zero um, to 3k, or it moves that 3k to block five. I think. I think that's how it works. And the 3k shifts from zero to five. Could be wrong. Please post some comments, Dave, if you can elaborate on that. Is that is that how that works? Does the 3k just shift from zero to block five? I suspect it does. And the reason I think that is I was looking at the uh, port of Doom. There's a version of Doom for the VIC-20 and it needs the 32K expansion, you know, something like this that provided 32K. Uh, I forget which one the RAM is. No, it's that one there. It's a CY 62256. So that'll provide 32K, but that Doom also needs an additional 3K. So you get, you know, 35K of additional RAM. And I'm guessing that, that, that I can't see where else the additional 3K could go apart from in block zero. On a, on, a, on a with a board like this so I think the idea with that doom is you need perhaps an expand expander um, adapter where you can plug this into one um, slot and then plug a 3k um, expansion you know, a standard 3k expansion into there as well so that both are being used so I've ordered a 3k expansion um, from eBay I'm gonna have, have a look at how it's wired um, I'm guessing that it's probably going to be wired into block zero, that 3K. Um, maybe I can modify one of the boards. I, would, I don't want to modify this one. Maybe I can modify my other board there to add an additional 3K. Or maybe I can do um, a modification to the VIC itself to hardwire 3K inside there. I don't know whether that's a good idea or not. Um, post some comments down below. If, you know, uh, Let me know what you think. And I'm, am I on the right tracks there in assuming that the it's, it's block th uh, zero where that 3K resides, you know, um, in order to get Doom working, I suspect it probably is. I don't think you could fit much more beyond that unless you used some sort of um, uh, what's the word map inside type, uh, you know, uh, bank, you know, some sort of way to flip uh, between blocks. You could probably get more than 32k uh, or 35k. I think um, it, it probably is possible, but it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be supported in a standard way. Uh, anyway, I'm rambling on. So yeah, the dip switches there, uh, uh, as I say, you know, can be used to switch those things on and off. You've also got switch three there. Uh, sorry, I'm moving around too much here. Um, which makes block three, and block five read only, you know, or, or not, depending on which position it's in. So it's very much like the other, uh, you know, the existing 32k RAM um, I covered in a previous video. Um, that's quite cool. Um, and switch four is a new feature on here, which is enables the ROM. Uh, which is that chip there, which I think actually is an AT27C512R. Um, it's also got an Atmel um, CPLD or something on here as well, I think. So uh, it's probably helped. That's obviously doing some of the address decoding for the RAM and the ROM here, depending on your dip switch settings and stuff. Um, yeah, so it's very cool. Um, the other interesting thing with this board, you'll notice it's got the two positions here for the dip switches and the, the uh, reset. Um, I think you could probably trim that off. Um, yeah, they're just in parallel. So it looks like you could probably trim that off if you didn't want the end piece there. But I think the idea being is that this will fit into an existing car shell, um, and this piece here will just overhang um, outside the car. So I'll just get a car now just to show you what I mean. Yeah, so here's an existing car, um, and if you if I sort of align that loosely with the existing car inside, you can see it will just sit out the back here in this little out of this little slot. I think what I'll do is just remove the screw and we'll just see if it fits okay. 
Yeah, so you can see how it would fit inside there now. It would fit in sort of that position there, and then your dip switches just hang out over the edge, you know, obviously you put your cover on and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, you need to modify the inside of this. You'd need to remove these, I think, because they're getting in the way, you know, it's not fitting flush because of those. Whereas if you look at the smaller board, the board that came out of it here, um, yeah, it doesn't quite go. Um, you know, those hold it in place, it doesn't quite, you know, they don't restrict it, you know, but it fits flat, that's the point I'm trying to make. So, if you put the, you know, you want to put this in here, you would have to, you know, trim these uh, pieces of plastic off there. But it will fit in there quite nicely. Um, I might do that at some point, um, I'm not sure, I don't desperately need to. Um, it might be a bit sacrilege to damage this original cart, actually, so. Um, I guess it'd be interesting to show you in there while we're here as well, you may as well have a look. A couple of uh, moss chips on there, just ROM chips. Uh, nothing spec. I think they're both ROM. I don't think there's any RAM. So we'll just plug it in now, show you the RAM working. Um, we'll load a game or something. Um, and then I'll show you the ROM, uh, the, the ROM feature as well, because that is quite cool. There you go, it's working as expected. Um, it's showing 28159 bytes free. In basic there, identical to the other 32K RAM expansion I've got. Um, I'll load something up now, but I mean, there's not a lot really more to show you there. It works exactly the same way as the other 32K RAM expansion module that I showed you in the you know the previous two videos really um, it does work perfectly the other thing worth pointing out while we're here Dave actually sent me um, a replacement via as well one of his West, uh, Western Digital WDC 65C uh, 22s um, and that has been working fine in this system without any kind of diode or Scotty diode uh, modification there on the NMI, you know, IRQ pin. Um, so that, that's a good test. I'll show you that in a minute. Actually, I'll just show you the chip in here. But yeah, thanks, thanks for sending that, Dave. I'll when I get a minute, I will post back to you um, one of these Rockwell chips with the diode on. Sorry, I know it's, it looks like a bit of a fudge, you know, on there. Um, I'm sure you'd be cursing when you see the diode on there, but still, it's you. You can test it with or without it, I guess. You know, and just see if you're getting the same results as me. But I get the same thing on both of these VIX systems here. So let's have a go with this. It's a bit loud, but let's turn it down to touch. Yeah, that's working all right. Oh, it's a bit of... Anyway, you can see that's working. So in order that you can actually see the part number on the uh, via there that Dave sent me, I've had to use Super Macro, so hopefully you can see that W65C22N. So yeah, that's working fine. As you can see, there's no modifications to the IRQ pin uh, or anything on there. So yeah, it's working fine. Thanks for that, Dave. So I've moved dip switch 4 up here to enable the ROM, but the other thing you have to do to get these ROMs, you know, the games from ROM working, is switch dip switch 2 down so it's off, um, and that shifts, um, so you can't really see it, block, I think it toggles, that switch toggles between block 0 and block 5, um, I'm not sure which position we've got it in at the moment, I think it's probably using block 0, um, and as you can see that's working, excuse, excuse the um, alignment there, I can move it across for the arrow keys, Wrapped around there now. There we go. Let's give that a go. But you can see that's loaded the game straight from ROM off the uh, off Dave's cart there. That's quite cool. It's not a bad uh, version of Invaders, this actually. Right, let's try switching over to a different game. So these last three dip switches here are used for ch changing the game. So we'll put switch five up, I think. Uh, if we can do that, yeah, that's it. Switch it back on. Let's see what we get. Amiga race. But in any case, you can see this work, and I've tested all the games out on this. I'll turn it down so it's quite loud. I've tested all the games that are on here, um, and it's working fine. So just looking at the sticker on here, you can see what games are on here at the moment. Avenger, Choplifter, Gorf, Jelly Monsters, Amiga Race, Radar Rat Race, Frogger, and the Diagnostics. The Diagnostics you can't really do very much with without the loopbacks, because I think it gets to like the third test, realises there's no, you know, the loopbacks aren't there, fails the test at that point, doesn't continue, but like, the, you know, the way the C64 Diagnostics work, if there's a fault, it reports the fault, but keeps doing the tests, you know, we'll keep retesting the other stuff. It doesn't work that way on the VIC, so... Um, 
but anyway, yeah, that's just worth knowing, I guess. Um, it's a really cool board. Um, like I said, keep your eyes on Dave's blog because you know he is going to do the version with the uh, you know an SD to IEC equivalent type thing running off the parallel port. Um, that's cool. But also, I think he was talking with regards to the ROM on here. Um, he was suggesting he's going to put a larger ROM. You know, the ROM that's on there now. Um, is it 64k? I think it is 64k. You know, hence where you've got eight games, eight k each. So uh, I don't know whether he's going to double that up or whether he's going to put something bigger, maybe a smaller, um, more modern chip on there. You know, a one meg or two meg chip or something. I don't know, but it'd be really cool to get more ROMs on there. And I think these are only eight k ROMs. I think he was planning on supporting some larger, you know, the 16k ROMs as well. So that would be interesting to see, you know, if anything can be done there. Um, I mean, it's amazing, really, that anybody's spending the spare time designing things like this for this old equipment. So I'm grateful for whatever Dave manages to produce for these. Um, anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. So just looking at the uh, bottom label here, you can see what games are on here at the moment. Avenger, Choplifter, Gorf, Jelly Monsters, Amiga Rat Race, Radar... So, oh god, a rat race, what the fuck's that?